Some time ago in my place of work, where I used to work a couple of years ago, we were setting up groups and we were looking at ways to improve our performance. And someone suggested that we should set up a communication group so that people can learn to improve their communication skills. And I remember vividly a senior person who spent about 30 years in the organization said, you know what, I love your optimism, you guys. I wish you well. And I was there. I'm very keen when it comes to communication. But remembering that story tells me that in many organizations today, people do not pay attention to communication. They rather think that they could send people to learn on trainings to learn some functional skills and how to deliver on certain functional areas, material handling and so on. But it's hard to see people sent to learn how to communicate. Granted, many times for those who are sent to learn to communicate are probably those who are in the communications team, maybe in the PR team of the business. But here, what we're saying is that, is it important for the finance manager, the production manager, the marketing manager, everybody to understand how to communicate effectively and how to deal with people? Is it important for business owners, for business leaders? I think it is. Let me explain why. Many times when we want to make decisions at the senior management level, we look at everything no matter the key performance indicators we put in place, people are often more focused on the financial savings, on what we're able to do financially, the numbers, the bottom line. Every other thing just follows. We would probably claim, no, that's not the case. But we know deep down inside of us, when we're having all these conversations in the boardroom, what we're thinking about is, what are we saving? The impact we are creating, how can, we be trans how can it be translated into numbers? But without going too deep into that, we sometimes the CFO or the team lead would want to look at, the CEO rather would look at the CFO and say, what is your take? It's expected that the person in charge of the finances understands what we can do and what we cannot. Here's my argument. After he's crunched the numbers, he would need to communicate in a language, in a way that every other person understands. Not everybody is a numbers person. So the CFO, the CEO probably does not want to go into all the nitty gritties. He just wants to understand what can we do and what, can, what can't we do. I use the word, you communicate. So if numbers are important, the bottom line is important, but the only way you understand that is that the person who gives you the information communicates in a way that you understand. That means communication is a conduit, is a tool, with which you are able, you get educated, and then you are able to make educated or informed decisions. Why would you rather focus on just sending the CFO or making available training opportunities for the CFO to learn a lot more about finance matters, corporate governance, and all of that, but you will not voluntarily, you will not be moved to invest in the CFO learning or improving his or her communication skills. Now that beats me. Food for thought, think about it. Communication is important, so why would you say, go learn every other skill but not communication skills? Why will, if the learning and development manager or director brings a training program built around communication, why would managers say, Oh, please, <laughs> do we need communication now? Do we need communication training? No, I don't think it's something that's important for us. I have seen it again and again that even when it's not being said, when it's not expressed, it is implied. So think about it. Why would you spend hours, days, weeks preparing a deck of PowerPoint presentations only for you to get to the point of delivering, the message is lost because your delivery was poor. Why do we spend so much time in putting all the texts and pictures and everything on a PowerPoint presentation 
But when we get to the point, that 10 minutes, that 20 minutes, that one hour that you have to deliver what you've spent weeks putting together, when that time comes, your delivery is so poor that the message is lost. That's a total waste of time and everybody's time, including yours. If that is important then, if delivering the message from you to the listeners, to the audience, to the other people there in the room is so important, why are we not paying attention to the skill, to developing the skill, the, 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 the necessary skills or set of skills that we need to deliver the message because the delivery of the message is even more important than all the fancy things you put in place. i give you why this is important. Let me demonstrate this. Many years ago, I used to be an MC. So you go to weddings back in Africa, you go to weddings and all of that. I used to do all of that. But I figured that the people who own the, the people who are putting the program together would spend a lot of money on getting the cake together, getting chairs, decorating the room, everything, getting a DJ. Guess what? Nothing comes to life except the MC picks up the mic and says, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the show today or you're welcome to the program today and everybody sits together. He puts everything, makes sure that everything a string together and the occasion comes alive. But when it comes to negotiating to pay the MC, people think, oh, what are you there to do? Is it not just talk? Okay, fine. So you do the talking. If we take this story back to, this example, this analogy back to communication, that's how in the corporate world, be it public sector, private sector, we probably make the mistake of paying attention to many other things, but not communication, not learning how to deal with people. So that's why you spend all the time, put all that stuff together and the message is lost. Still talking about communication and dealing with people. Why would you lose a marriage, a friendship, a relationship that you've built over the years just because you failed to, just because you failed to communicate effectively, you failed to connect, you failed to deal with the other person the way the person should be dealt with in order to preserve that relationship. Many things have happened. People have lost marriages, relationships, friendships, businesses, just because of lack of the necessary skills at that point in time to communicate effectively, to connect with people, to deal with people. A lot could go wrong when you, when you fail to communicate effectively. That reminds me of what John D. Rockefeller said. He said, you can go research who John D. Rockefeller was. I don't think there's anybody in the history of the United States, if at all, has been as acquired as much wealth as he did at the point at the time he died decades ago. He said, if there's one skill he would do everything to get, to develop, it would be the skill of dealing with people. Of course, as an industrialist, he had a lot of challenges dealing with people, strike actions, you know, employee, employer, fracas here and there. And he came to understand the power of dealing with people, the power of dealing with people respectfully, carefully, communicating in a more, in a more productive way. He said, if there's one thing, one skill he would love to learn a lot more, he would invest so much to learn, it's the skill of dealing with people. Now you realize why relationships could go south, marriages could go south, businesses could get lost. In fact, if you're looking for a job, you could lose the chance to get that job because in the course of the interview, you failed to communicate, to connect. We pay so much attention to ways of answering. You watch YouTube videos, you read a whole lot about, how, how to, uh, about questions you might think about to answer and all of that. 
even in interviews, since I'm talking about interviews, people pay attention to what questions are they going to ask me? How am I going to respond? So your question, many, your, your focus many times, most times, is on the questions that will be asked and you yourself, how you're going to answer. But there's a third, equa- there's a third part of that equation, and that is the person talking to you. The person talking to you is an embodiment of emotions. They are thinking, am I connecting? Is this person, do-? because many times the person who is interviewing you, if you have three people interviewing you, the hiring manager is amongst them. The person whom you're going to work in he, he, with his or her team is amongst them. And the person's thinking many times, I've been in that, that I've worn those shoes. It's not about whether you're answering the questions, whether you're brilliant or not. It's about connection. Is that do you, does this person fit the culture? Do I want this person in my team? Will this person be a headache, a source of headache? Will this person, do I need this person? So in as much as you're thinking about your technical capabilities and all of that, there's the emotional part that is saying, do I really connect with this person? I have seen cases when I used to head one of the HR departments in the course of my my work as an HR person. I've seen cases where you find the panel, very different members of the panel, they'll do their markings and one candidate will probably come out, will stand out in terms of answering the questions and all the essential skills, desirable skills and all of that. And the hiring manager would say, yeah, she's the highest. She is the candidate that stood out but I think I prefer this person. And then the hiring manager begins to defend, begins to put up a case because of this other person that is not the highest scoring candidate, but the hiring manager thinks this is the more appropriate candidate for my team's culture. This is the person I wanna work with. And if I were to make the decision myself, this is the person I'll work with. So it's not about the intelligence many times. It's not about the logic. The emotion is more important when it comes to connecting with people. I had this story not too long ago of a chef in the United Kingdom who was working in a space. You know, if in the United Kingdom, I figured out that many times you find that in the world of in the hospitality world, that's what I've seen in the hospitality world you have more male chefs in the kitchen than female chefs. And you have, you have very few colored people or people from minority backgrounds. So this, I had this story of a chef, a female chef who was assigned to a kitchen. And by the time she got there, it's a long story, but by the time she got there, She was discriminated against in every ramification. Like it was obvious she was discriminated against. And somehow the the message got to someone. She was to write a letter to the agency who sent her to the hotel to work with. Because this has happened three, four times before this very one in different areas. They'll just call the agency and they'll probably just say, we don't want to see this person here again. Uh, This person, and for no verifiable reason, because the agency works for these hotels or organizations and that's their clients and they don't want to lose their clients. The chef is just a middle person who is dispensable. So they just say, we're not sending you to that place again. And she would go on asking, what did I do? What went wrong? At least let me learn from my mistakes and nothing came out. So when this happened, fortunately, there was an operations manager who said, no, you know what? I cannot accept this. And by the time we traced back, we figured out that the operations manager had some, was from a mixed family with people from the minority side. So he's been in that space of seeing discrimination, people talked down upon and all of that. So he's, he's got that experience. He's been exposed to that experience. So his view of life was different. And he said, no, we're not going to accept that. And he took it up. 
and defended this person. Then the case came up, but here's the thing. When she wanted to write an email to the agency, the person that got the message told her, do not complain, just educate them. And so the first thing she wanted to do was, I'm going to tell them what happened. I had electric shock. I almost died. Blah, blah. No, 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 no. <laughs> the person said, slow down. No. All that's been taken up by the report. Now, what you want to do is to educate them to say, you realize I have this experience, that experience, the other experience, the other one. Now, let me tell you about this one. And then narrate what happened and then tell them, it's about the same thing, but in these cases, I had no one to speak for me. But here, there was someone who stood up, and that's why you're hearing this. And now I'm encouraging you to look at this and the other minority, people from the minority side that you send to work for these organizations and find a way to protect them. Here's the moral of the story. When she wrote the email, almost immediately, they called and asked for a meeting. And they arranged, when they met, she told me, you know, we're having this conversation in the group. And she said, she said, the manager that met her said, your email was really thorough and there was no iota of anger. I mean, it's so mature with everything that happened to you. Oh my goodness. What am I trying to say? She could have lashed out. On that email, she could have said everything and said, you guys have been treating me badly, blah, 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 blah. When we lash out on people, it's reflex to become defensive. Now, instead of the agency becoming defensive, the agency did what they embraced and said, please come, let's talk. And in their minds, they will never forget. I believe they'll never forget that they worked with someone who despite what she went through, I can't talk about the whole story here, it'll be too long, but it was life-threatening, she almost got electrocuted. But even all of that, she was calm. You see, I don't know how to express it, but communication, learning to communicate in the family, in the relationship that you have with people, it's amazing what you can accomplish. And that's why I really would encourage you to go find the book written by Dale Carnegie, How to Make Friends and Influence People. I hope that that is correct. How to Make Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's an old book, decades ago. But it is a very powerful book. So go read it. If you cannot read it, listen to it, listen to the podcast. I tell you from the bottom of my heart that if you learn to communicate, which is something we keep learning, there is no end, but you get better because you become more intentional at what you do and you become, you become more focused on becoming better at your communication skills and how to deal with people. So this lady got this sort of standing ovation, if you like, because she was calm and that reflected in her email. So our work, when you type your email, you want to send something to people, your colleagues, your boss, or the people that work with you, your team. Do you send this out of anger or do you stop back and say, hey, come on, wait a minute. Am I communicating properly? Is it out of anger? Will this communication detach me from this person? This email, will it detach me from this person or will it connect me further with this person? Do I even really need to send the email? Can I walk up to the person and have a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, which is really difficult for most people, but I think one-on-one -on -one conversations they make a whole lot of difference than sending emails. Or if I can't go physically in this world, in this post-COVID world, can I actually get on Teams or on Zoom? Can I get on the phone and speak calmly with the person? Communicating with people effectively makes a whole lot of difference in our lives, in our work, and wherever we find ourselves. People also make the mistake of thinking, oh, when you talk about public speaking, we're talking about the guys on stage. For instance, we're talking about the Les Browns of this world, the Tony Robbins of this world, the Robin Sharmas of this world, you know, the Eric Thomases of this world, and no. 
No. When we talk about public speaking and communication, it's about everyday life. It affects us. It's tied to our mental health. Are you able to talk about what's happening? Well, I don't want to go into mental health, but it's, it has to do, it connects with your mental health. It connects with emotional intelligence. It connects with leadership, with business, relationships, name it. So when you hear public speaking, when you hear communication, it's not about standing on the stage behind the poop, I mean, behind the lectern and, and do all the blah, blah, all the razzmatazz, all the abracadabra, no. It's about everyday life. How we deal with our spouses, how we deal with our children, how we deal with our friends, how we deal with our bosses, those who work with us, name it. Just to illustrate that public speaking and communication is not about just standing on the stage and to see if this is really will make a difference in your life. Let me give you a task. Why don't you try smiling for one week? Smile when you wake up in the morning, when you stand in front of the mirror and you take a look at yourself, smile and say, it's a good day and I'm grateful to be alive. Start smiling. You think smiling is easy. No, it's not. Many people, it's not. The worries and anxieties of life, it's crazy. And I know. Now, I may not know what your situation is. And I will be presumptuous if I think I understand where you are in life. and What you're passing through. Ill health, economic challenges, name it. Work-life balance challenges, children, relationship challenges. I do not know. And I'm, I don't want to be presumptuous. It would be insensitive for me to think I understand. But I think at least I've got the power of imagination. So I can only imagine. So asking that people smile, that you smile today, may not sound reasonable, but I'm asking, let's, let it just be a game. Try it. Wake up, smile at yourself. Smile at your spouse. Smile at your children, your kids. When you walk out of the house, your house, you get to work. Smile at your colleagues. Greet people and smile. Don't say hi, hi. Hi. How are you doing today? Stop. Look at people in the eyes. Tell them you care. I had this handshake not too long ago with a senior friend of mine, which I'm going to call Rob for purposes of this story. And Rob held my hand when I shook him. He held my hand. Okay, it was a firm shake. And then he put the other hand on me, on this, on my hand, on the other side, on my, on the other, on my hand. And then he said, listen, this is where your heart is. That's why he told me that this is where your heart is. And when I touch you here, I'm touching your heart. And I'm saying, son, I care about you. Now, I've never heard that explanation before. But I loved it. I felt good. You have a handshake. And he says, hey, how are you doing? Try this. Smile. You may not do what Rob did with me, but smile and ask people, how are you doing? Many times when people say good and people say, I'm all right, they're really not all right. They're simply saying, I don't want to talk about it. But ask like you mean it. So smile. It's just take it. It's a game. It's a task. Just do it for one week. Come back and tell me. I don't know where you've been seeing this video, but come back, put down your comment and say, hey, I tried smiling for one week and it was different. Try to be positive for one week. I'm trying to demonstrate that when we talk about public speaking, communication, dealing with people, it's not about standing on the stage alone. But I'm saying it's about everyday life, how we deal with people. So I'm saying start with not talking like you're on the stage, but start with smiling. Look at people in the eyes respectfully, with care and smile. Ask them how they're doing. Be positive. Try and maintain it for one week. 
and come back and say, oh, you know what, I felt worse. But come back and tell us if you really did feel good. Now, if that works out for you and you really did feel good or you felt better, I'm going to ask you, don't you think it is valuable for you to invest some more time and a bit of resources to learn a bit more how to deal with people, how to connect with people, how to have conversations with people, how to communicate and connect. Will it not be important? Will it not be valuable? Will it not be profitable to you as a person? If that's the case, maybe you should give it some more thought. Learn how to deal with people. I've come to realize, and I know for sure, that the cost of not knowing how to communicate and to connect with people can be very costly. We used to have this guy in one of the companies I worked for about, about 10 years ago, where he was a good guy. We needed him for, we needed someone to fill a very senior role and this guy came in. For purposes of this story, I'm gonna call him Bola. He came in, smart, Harvard graduate, very intelligent, spoke well, bold voice, picks the phone, and you're comfortable. We go to meet our clients, to have business conversations. You are not scared that they're going to ask a question that's going to throw the team off balance or off the curve. Because he's got a way somehow to navigate and answer questions and sell the business, bring in sales. He was good, he was a champion. So for six months, everything was good. Beautiful delegator, he was, he was brilliant. He was just Mr. Fix-It. But about 10 months down the line, nobody wanted to work with him. It became a challenge to get people to work with him. And he himself started wondering, what's happening? Why, what's, what's happening? And we were also at last. We conducted a survey and figured out amongst every other thing, one thing stood out. He couldn't connect with people. He was a goal-oriented person. We need this done, we need that done. You, you better get your acts together. You better do this, you better do that. You better put yourself. In a non-aggressive way, but in a non-frontal way, but you can feel the aggression. You can feel the push. And gradually people started pulling out, pulling away from him. But just to let you know, he couldn't keep that job for longer. So I would say that he committed career suicide, if you like, as long as that huge organization was concerned. No matter how brilliant or how important you are, if you cannot deal with people, it can be really challenging. The cost is huge. Huge. There's this story many years ago that happened in Israel just to demonstrate how powerful it is when we learn to communicate, to connect with people, to deal with people. You get to relate to why John D. Rockefeller said it's a very critical skill that he would learn any day, any time to deal with people, learn to deal with people. Now, Gideon had been told, as the story goes, had been told, has been told by God to fight, to go fight the Midianites. Before then, the Midianites, the Israelites were being oppressed by different nations around them. That's the Israel of old. So from about 32,000 men with different things God did with him, brought down, God brought down the number of men to fight with him to 300. Now, that was the tribe of Ephraim, a huge, powerful tribe, but very proud and obstinate. For some reason, Gideon did not involve them in the main fight. But then Gideon told them to block the crossing at the Jordan. So when they fought with the Midianites and two Midianites, two Midianite princes escaped, the Ephraimites caught the Midianite princes that escaped and killed them, beheaded them, brought their heads to Gideon. 
Everybody was happy, great victory for the Israelites. But the Ephraimites came with their, with their pride and everything. Why? And then they asked Gideon, why would you go and then back on this great fight without carrying us along? Why didn't you tell us about this? Why would you do this? And then it was becoming something else. Now that most likely could have resulted in a civil war. Because Gideon had won a great victory. And most of the Israelites were on his side. You know, everybody likes success. And then the Ephraimites were also a, pride and, a proud and huge tribe. Very powerful. It could have been, why would you talk to me that way? I mean, I got divine, I got instructions, divine instructions to carry out what I did. Why, why would you talk to me that way? And it would have gone, go, it would have gone ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, boom. Civil war, maybe. But look at what Gideon did. So here the Ephraimites, why would you do what you did? Why didn't you carry us along? I mean, no, this is not right. It's not right. You, 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 you listen. You have to listen. And Gideon went, oh, come on, my brothers. Now, look at what I have done. And look at what you have done. What I have done is not close to what you have done. You caught the princes of Midian. You caught the princes of the Midianites. You beheaded them. In fact, the main victory is with you. Come on. Why are we fighting? Why? And then the Ephraimite sat back and said, well, he's got a point. I mean, we were the ones that actually finished the battle. Gideon didn't need to be that diplomatic. He didn't need to go that route. But what did he get? What did he bring? It brought peace. And everybody went home rejoicing. Communication. Saying the right things. At the right time. With the aim to connect with people. Learning to deal with people can save a lot. So Gideon, in that instance, saved the nation of Israel from getting embroiled in a possible civil war, if you ask me. Even if he didn't need to bend. So learning to communicate with people is a crucial skill that I would really encourage business owners, everyone, to get their back on and take it as something very serious. Now, when we talk about businesses, Many times, like I started from the beginning, I said, businesses are more important, are more interested in what's the bottom line? How much money are we making in all of this? Rather than also getting people to understand what most people call soft skills, but I call essential skills. And I think the number one essential skill everybody in any organization should understand and learn to do or learn to execute or learn to put to use as a skill of communicating effectively in order to connect with people around and to deal with them for the benefit of the business. I created an acronym called CLEAR, C-L-E-A-R, to answer the question, why should businesses, why should you as a business owner pay attention to developing the communication skills of the people that work with you? Why is it important for you as a business leader to also develop your communication skills? Why should you learn a lot more how to deal with people more effectively? So C stands for collaboration and conflict resolution. When people in an organization learn how to effectively communicate, it promotes teamwork. It helps to resolve conflicts and it fosters a harmonious work environment. I know that for sure. And that's why when you receive an email, when you're in a meeting, you're talking with one another, the way you communicate can tell a lot more if the team is going to succeed or the team will not succeed you. You get an email and you're saying, okay, so how do I respond in order to maintain connection, not to disconnect? L stands for leadership and influence. Strong communication enables managers to inspire and influence their teams, to lead their teams effectively 
and will cause their teams to trust and respect them. In my time, I have worked with managers who know their jobs. If they're production managers, they're marketing managers, they're operation managers, they know the end-to-end -end process of everything, but not how to manage people. They'll always have issues with leading. They'll always have issues with communicating. A communication style, a communication processes and the way you communicate, everything will just bring down the team. So the team keeps struggling. I've seen lots of that. In some cases, some have gone on to improve themselves and become better. Some have been clear, outright, obstinate and been set in their ways. When these things happen, trust me, they do affect the business negatively. Now, E stands for employment and employee engagement. When we learn to communicate effectively as business owners, as leaders, as business leaders, we have open and effective communication. What it does is that it helps to improve, to increase employee morale. And also improves or increases job satisfaction. You cannot take that away. It increases job satisfaction because people know that they're being community. You, you're talking to them in a transparent way with respect, love, care, empathy, compassion. And people would return that. And so as a business owner, if you invest in every other bit, in every other capability improvement program, and not in communication, I'm urging you to think about it again. Maybe there's something that is missing. And if we're engaging in helping our people to learn how to communicate more effectively, let it not just be a perfunctory thing. Let it be, try to weave it into the culture of your business. Now, A, adaptability and innovation. Things will happen, organizations will change, processes will change. But when we communicate effectively with a view to connecting, we drive adaptability and innovation by encouraging openness to change and to new ideas. When we communicate clearly, when we communicate with respect, out of love, care, empathy, compassion, we have a team that is glued together that feels part of the whole movement. And so change becomes easier to deal with. Now, our results and customer satisfaction. You cannot take away the importance of effective communication, clear communication, because in this case, because it helps you to achieve better decision making, it helps to boost productivity, and it leads to improved customer satisfaction. In fact, people would see, when people that deal with your organization would see that you communicate differently to other people or other organizations. So, to wrap this up, if you're a business owner, you're a business leader, you're a business manager, you're a team lead, as you pay attention to all the other skills, project management skills, business analysis skills, AI skills, other technical skills, understand that the string or the bridge that links all of this is that skill of communication and dealing with people. It is not a soft skill to be pushed to the background. It's a skill that should be brought to the forefront. Because when that happens, if you just try that, you would see the impact it's going to have on your bottom line almost immediately. And that will stay, if you maintain the culture, a good culture, that will stay over a period of time. I have seen that again and again, working with different clients, having in-house, holding in-house workshops or facilitating in-house workshops, having one-on-one -on -one coaching with people, even with managers, and they get to realize, hmm, what you're saying is correct. And we co we work together, go back together. I, I remember a particular case where we took, we took a very dry presentation that a senior manager was about, go, to go, was about to go and present. And we took that presentation, broke it down together. It broke it down, infused stories, and created pictures, and got him to weave that almost 50-minute presentation 
into some stories and key things that have happened in the organizations and put some comparisons together. And the presentation came down to about 30 minutes. He came back three days after and said it made all the difference. He has never, never had such a presentation, never presented in such a way and never had such a reaction. For him, the board meeting or the senior management meeting was always about, let's go do some dry stuff and come back. But the moment he realized that the people that are in the room, that will be in the room, are sacrificing a bit of their life to listen to him. And then it is important that he puts the time to make this interesting, to make this worthwhile, to make it memorable. It changed the game for him. Does this shift that happened? And I, I saw it immediately. If you're a senior manager or a team lead, your presentation doesn't need to be dry. Your speech doesn't need to be dry. All you need to do is put some effort, some more effort to understand the communication skills that you need to develop. Understand that there's a wide range of communication skills that people need to develop. Everyone, we are all at different levels. I delivered a speech a couple of weeks ago and when, during the networking session, somebody came to me and said, how did you do the things that you did? Now, what I did was, I know that somehow along the line, I was losing the audience and I had to do something immediately on the stage that I did not plan. And somehow I think he noticed it. So when we got talking, I told him, I said, I think at some point in your life, as you speak in public, you become bold enough to try certain things on the stage. They try say it's like a com it's like a normal everyday conversation. And while you're telling the story, you figure out that your friend is disinterested, is disconnected. So you do something to bring the person's attention back, or maybe you stop telling that story the way you're telling it and say something else. Somehow it happens. We do it. So many of us do it intuitively. And when we're on stage, we're so focused on ourselves that we, we're afraid to try any other thing. So I tried a couple of things. And yes, they worked and the audience went, whoa, life came back, everything electrifying. And he said, how did you do that? He was asking me. But why am I trying to tell you stories? Don't focus on me. I'm trying to say that as we grow, in learning to develop, in learning to communicate, we are at different levels. So I could take that risk on the stage. You may not be able to take that. You may be too terrified to do that. There's some people that probably do, a, do it better than me. So because someone will always be better than you, and you will be better than some others. So do not over, don't beat yourself up too much. Wherever you are, start growing from that point. That's my encouragement. That's the essence of this story. Wherever you are, start growing from that point. You may have been an amazing, fantastic manager for decades, 20, 30 years, and you've never paid attention to communication. This is probably the time. Maybe that's why you've seen this video. So start today. Become a more powerful communicator. Become a more influential communicator. Have, create more impact with your message other than just presenting some dry stuff. I hope this motivates you to get started on the line of communication. If you're a business person, if you're a business person, it motivates you to begin to invest in your people and getting them to learn a lot more on how they can become more powerful communicators because that will impact your business positively. That will grow your business, I tell you. And you will have a stronger team to work with. You can apply that in your family, talking to your wife, talking to your husband, talking to your partner, talking to your children. The key thing is always ask yourself, will this action, my mode of communication, connect me with this person some more or disconnect me? Will it help me to deal with this person more with love and compassion or will it 
will I, will it, would I appear to be cold and then there's going to be a disconnection. If there's a disconnection, what would be the impact, what would be the result of this disconnection? One more question. Am I willing to pay the price of not communicating appropriately? Am I willing to pay the price of not learning how to deal with people? Am I willing to lose relationship, my relationship? Am I willing to lose my business? Am I willing to lose time? Am I willing to lose friends? Because I am unable to communicate appropriately and to connect with people. Now, if your answer is no, I advise you to go on communicating with a view to connecting with people and to create better relationships, grow in your business, become a better person and impact the world positively. My name is Talono Bremi Samuel and my sincere desire for you is that you go on succeeding by becoming a better version of yourself. Until I come your way again, keep on communicating in a more impactful way, in a more influential way, keep changing lives because you are deliberate at becoming a more powerful communicator. Bye for now.